So were you surprised when you saw your Google package? Oh, it's just mind boggling. <laughs> so I would not say that my relationship with coding changed so much. I just, I really enjoy it. It's something that I really love. I should be paid more, okay? Yeah, like, where's my 50K raise? <laughs> exactly. If we look at Google, right? Mm -hmm. PMs at Google have to do a lot of administrivia. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Super excited to be talking to Clement Mihalasko today, who has a YouTube channel of his own, is an ex-Google engineer, currently works at Facebook as an engineer, covering all those fang letters, and has a whole company of his own, Algo Expert, that focuses on interview, coding interview prep. Check out the link in the description below. And we're talking about his relationship with coding and how without a CS degree, he got a job at Google from the get-go. So if you're interested, definitely stay tuned. It's great to meet you, great. finally in person. Great to meet you in person, Luba. Why did you start coding? I started coding because I've always wanted to build stuff. I've always wanted to have my own company to be able to create, crystallize an idea, mm -hmm. you know, make it turn into reality. And coding allows you to do that. It yeah. gives you the power to do that. And how did you get to coding? Because as far as I know, you didn't actually study software engineering or computer science. Yeah, so I had this misconception in college that you had to have been coding since you were a kid. Mm. To, sounds um, very familiar. <laughs> sounds familiar, right? Uh, and it was a big misconception because it turns out you don't need to have been coding since you were a kid. And so out of college, I realized that if I did want to create my own company, I needed to learn how to code. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to get into something like product management, mm -hmm. which was something else that was kind of appealing to me. Mm -hmm. Product management at big tech companies and startups requires coding knowledge and uh, or a CS degree or a computer science background. Mm -hmm. So that's why I sort of uh, decided to attend a coding boot camp and to learn how to code. Interesting. Did you also have a misconception that you have to be in Silicon Valley to code and work at a company? It's funny, like I, I did definitely think that I was gonna be moving to Silicon Valley. Uh -huh. um, but I, like I didn't necessarily, yes, I, I, I saw myself moving to Silicon Valley eventually. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in now I'm in New York and I don't see really myself moving from New York. Got it. So you kind of moved away from that stereotype that you need to be in the valley. Uh, yes, I would say so. If anything, now I think New York is like a big tech hub and other places yeah. in the states. For sure. So you went to coding bootcamp. You said. Yep. Did you actually go through with it, and that's what got you the skills to end up getting a job at Google, right? That yep. was your first company that you worked at yep. as a software engineer. How long was the bootcamp? The bootcamp was. Total of four months, three months of it were what they call the sort of immersive portion, uh -huh. the in-person mm -hmm. portion. Um, then there was one month before that was remote and kind of foundational work. Got it. And how do you like coding in general when you entered the space? Like, did you kind of fall in love with it right away? Yeah, so that's the expression that I used to use like in interviews when people were like, tell me about yourself. And I would uh -huh. say, um, I did. I went to a coding boot camp for the reasons that I just gave you, but then I happened to kind of fall in love with coding and realize mm -hmm. that, wait, maybe I want to make a career in software engineering. Uh -huh. um, it was just really fun. I got particularly interested in algorithms and sort of coding challenges. Mm -hmm. I just really enjoyed those, but also just general coding, mm -hmm. like building web apps and stuff like that. So you did mention at the beginning that you were thinking about becoming a product manage manager yes. and that in your head required knowing how to code also. Yeah. Why did you decide to pursue software engineering versus product management? So that's a good question. I think it was uh, threefold. Mm -hmm. So you need three sort of reasons. The first one is that I fell in love with coding out of the boot camp and I said, you know what, I'm going to try to just get into coding. Like, mm -hmm. it just seems really fun and I'm going to do that. The second thing is that product management is pretty difficult to get mm -hmm. into. Uh, and the, the more you are in the industry, the more you realize that product managers tend to have software engineering experience mm -hmm. beyond even just a CS background. Uh -huh. So that was another reason. And then the third reason is that now that I have worked in the industry, I've realized that there are things that PMs do that, or have to do, that aren't necessarily what I thought they had to do. And Can what you I, give an example? Well, if we look at Google, right? Mm -hmm. PMs at Google have to do a lot of sort of administrivia. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to write product requirement docs and things that are not necessarily, that I might not necessarily agree with or things that aren't necessarily what I, I pictured PMs as 
mini CEOs, right? In some ways they are, but in some ways they aren't. Interesting, that's a very different way of, that different mental model that I have of PMs. To me, a PM, I guess, is kind of a mini CEO, but right. at the same time, they're also a middle man between all these different parties that they need yes. to consolidate and find consensus in between. So there are a lot of the times in my head mediators. Yes. So a lot of the times like you think PMs have power, but sometimes it's more about that uh, implicit influence. Right. And it's not, like, don't get me wrong, I'm, it's not that I am, for instance, power hungry. Mm -hmm. That's not really it at all. However, I do appreciate, like one of the things that I appreciate about creating your own business is mm -hmm. that you can really decide the vision, right. right? You can decide the vision of the product, you can truly create the product. As a mm -hmm. product manager, sometimes you have these other constraints right. from upper leadership mm -hmm. that just aren't you know, the same uh, if you're building your own company. As a side yeah. note, there's a field called engineering management that I'm sure you've heard of, right? As someone who is a software engineer. And that's actually a kind of interesting field that mm -hmm. uh, I've grown sort of bigger and bigger interest mm -hmm. in as I've been a software engineer. Yeah, so that, that's a great segue actually. How do you see your career as a software engineer? Like, is, did your relationship with coding change? Do you want to move away from it? Right. So I would not say that my relationship with coding changed so much. I just, I really enjoy it. It's something mm -hmm. that I really love. However, as I knew when I first wrote my first line of code, mm -hmm. the one thing that hasn't changed is that I do not see myself as a, an individual contributor software engineer for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I am simply not the kind of person who will want to be, you know, at, at Google, you know, there's the, the individual contributor yeah. track. I'm just not gonna be that type yeah. of person. I know that I will eventually transition mm -hmm either into engineering management or product management or something, you know, some sort of tangential field. Yeah. Engineering management is very appealing to me. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that it takes a certain kind of person and personality to follow the individual contributor yeah. track as a software engineer. So I'm curious, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, coding was something that was a means to build a product and a yeah. vision for you. I, I wonder, was money also part of the equation? You know, coding's very hype in right. the US. You make a good, decent, Right. decent living with it but at the same time there is also a lot of other industries where you can learn a skill that helps you build and solve problems like right. did you encounter that put that into your decision equation at all yes and no because i think that admittedly we live in a day and age where software engineering especially at the entry level mm -hmm. is probably the most lucrative field there is Yes, there are other fields that are comparatively lucrative, like let's say law or medicine, but those fields tend to be extremely lucrative at the very end of your career or like mm -hmm. 10 years or 20 years down the line, right? With right. an insane amount of work preemptively. Software engineering is sort of the opposite. Yeah. And I will admit that when I started seeing some of my close friends who were in computer science and ended up in software engineering fields, getting the types of salaries that you sort of hinted at, yeah. I was kind of thinking, hmm, you know, this interesting. interesting, you know, very interesting. But on top of that, like, and when you pair that, I guess, with the whole building a product and all yeah. that stuff, it became a no-brainer, if right. that makes sense. That makes sense. So were you surprised when you saw your Google uh, package. Oh, it's just mind-boggling. <laughs> it is you. Now that you're in the industry, you kind yeah. of it almost you you take it for granted. Yeah, it's like getting old, right? You it, it, you realize that it gets old once you start saying stuff right. like, "Hmm, am I underpaid here?" <laughs> it's kind of again mind-boggling. But yes. Were you thinking that you were like, did you have times when you were like, "Oh, should I switch companies?" There or were there were times where yeah, you you think like. Based on the performance that I'm uh -huh. giving, you know, I should be paid more. Okay, yeah, like where's my 50k raise? <laughs> exactly. But again, it's like it is an industry where you do have to remind yourself to be a bit. You have to ground yourself a little bit just yeah. because it, these compensation packages are so yeah. like crazy. Yeah, makes sense. You know, you were known for that one line of code and then a job at Google. How long did it actually take from you actually writing your first line of code to get in a job at Google? So the video is titled First Line of Code to Google in Six Months, uh -huh. and it really is very close to the truth. I say it in the video that if you actually count out the months, it's more around seven months, mm -hmm. uh, but six months just makes for that's a better so title. That's really impressive, yes. But um, that's, yeah, that's what it took. It was, I wrote that line of code in, in June 2016, mm -hmm. and then I got the offer letter 
in uh, or the hire decision in February yeah. of 2018. And I know you just joined Facebook. Congrats. I know you just joined Facebook too. Congratulations. Thank you. You're like covering all the fang. Just all the two fangs, more, yes. Two more to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to thank chat you for with having me. me. And yeah. uh, congrats, as I said before. And super exciting to see what things you're going to accomplish next. Yep, we'll see. Only time will tell. I know. <laughs> it's always the most, the most exciting thing is to like see the future or think about the future, but then to remind yourself that like you have to live in the present. Yeah, agreed. That's a, that's a good way to end. Uh, and end the chat. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like and a subscribe. And I actually did a video on Clement's channel about my transition into a different role. So definitely make sure to check it out. I link it below in the description. And I hope you have a wonderful day as always. And bye for now.